Good morning. Welcome to the Stockdale Melbourne Open. This is the first semi-final at Hume Tennis Centre in Craigieburn. My name is Greg Crump. I work for Tennis Australia as a wheelchair tennis coach. Today with me is Anthony Bonacurso, player and coach as well. Good morning, Anthony. How are you, Greg? Uh, it's a pretty warm day out here in uh, Craigieburn at Hume Highway and in the Hume, Hume Tennis Centre. The players we have today for the first semi-final is from Japan. Yui Kimiji, and second player is KG Montaigne from South Africa. KG's best ranking is? Uh, number one in the world. And currently? Uh, number one in the world. Can't do much better than that. It is. And KG's current ranking? Number seven in the world, and her best has been number five. Conditions today are going to be? Very, very, very hot. It's uh, blowing about 30 or 40 knots at the moment. You might be able to hear the wind through the microphone, so we apologise for that. And it's, uh, currently it's about 32 degrees with a top temperature of 41. Looking forward to some uh, hot tennis out here today. Anthony's uh, been involved in the game since 1988, nine. Yeah, that'll do, it'll, uh, 1990. But that's pretty good. That's uh, well, Crumpy was my first person that introduced me to wheelchair tennis uh, out in the hospital. I had an accident uh, and I pretty much broke my back um, and I was in rehab for about three and a half months. That's where I met Greg Crump and he introduced me to wheelchair tennis. What's your uh, your tennis pathway? You've, you've played uh, on the tour and uh, now you've retired from tennis. Uh, what was your pathway and what are you currently doing with uh, wheelchair tennis? You still stayed involved with the game? Yeah, I have. Uh, my, my pathway was from, not, from say 1990, learning how to play the game, um, and then I, I pretty much I retired at what 2006 was my last professional match. Uh, so it was a, it was a good you know 16 years of of playing. Uh, from that fr from that it was um, you know I learned how to become a coach. Uh, that also paid for a, a lot of my coaching, uh, and I got my qualifications and all that sort of jazz. And from there, I've had a lot of gigs uh, with Tennis Australia. Now, currently coaching uh, wheelchair tennis, and I, I sometimes do the odd able-bodied coaching. Good eye, good eye. Uh, today we have a bit of an unusual event. We have uh, two left-handers out here, so uh, they'll be interesting to see they line up again each against each other. Not often you get to play against another left-hander before. That is true. Uh, two left-handers is going to be interesting. Uh, the wind, I think, is going to be the major factor here. It's uh, running from the, from the, well, it's hard to say, from uh, one end of the court down to the other end of the court, from the uh, Japanese side down to the South African side. Perfect. This is the uh, second tournament for the uh, 2018 year calendar, ITF calendar. Uh, the first one was in Sydney last week, which is a Super Series tournament. And this is an ITF1 tournament. Um, Anthony, can you explain the, uh, the standard of tournaments, the highest level down to the grassroots level? Yeah, so you've got your, you start at your Super, super Series, which is Australian Open, British Open, um, you know, US Open and all that, and the French Open. And then it just it gets graded down by numbers. Um, but this is an unbelievable tournament. I think this is the first time they've had, in the men's draw, they've had the uh, 9 out of the 10, uh, top 10, here in the, in the women's draw. I think it's uh, pretty much the same yeah, numbers. pretty much the same numbers. So Hume Tennis would be absolutely stoked with the turnout that's been here. So next week, uh, a lot of these players go on to uh, play the Australian Open again, the first uh, Grand Slam tournament for the year. The top eight and top men uh, qualify for this event, and also there's a quad division with the uh, top four players qualifying for that as well. Yeah, which is a really good tournament. Um, a few years ago, they, they introduced all the Super Series events uh, at these Australian Open and all, all the other all the major Grand Slams around the world. And uh, it's really good for the players, like especially the top eight, because it sort of gives them a good, um, you know, gives them good money, which uh, hasn't been seen in wheelchair tennis for, well, well the years I played anyway. Uh, so it sort of gives them, a, if they do well, it gives them a good starting block to uh, have a really good year, because uh, they don't have to really worry too much about funding and all that sort of stuff. I think we have about two minutes to go um, on the warm-up. The, the girls are playing pretty well at the moment, considering 
the wind out there is uh, it's it's blowing. We'll get back to you, uh, in a few minutes and uh, hopefully we get the match on the way. So, Anthony, in today's conditions, who do you think the wind will favour the most and why, of course? Oh, all I can say is I used to love playing in the wind. Uh, I was an ex-sailor as well, uh, so I sort of knew could read what the wind was doing and all that sort of stuff. The, the wind's going to definitely favour uh, this top end where the Japanese player is playing at the moment. Uh, you're hitting down with the winds. Um, so I think if you hit you know, nice, high, loopy, loopy balls, the wind is just going to carry that ball to the back fence. Um, the South African player down the other end, or whoever's down that end, is definitely going to have to try and take that ball as early as possible so the wind doesn't uh, carry that ball to the back fence. Do you think our plane styles will uh, make any difference on that as well? It will suit one player or the other? It definitely will. Uh, I think it's, you know, the first thing first is I think the nerves uh, in the semi final match here. Um, they've got to overcome that and then work out these conditions. I think a lot of these, well, these two girls, they have probably haven't seen much of these conditions in, uh, in the last six months. Australia has these wild conditions and out here in Craigieburn, it's, um, it's pretty tough conditions. There's no, out, out behind the court, uh, it's just an open field, so the wind is just streaming through. I'm going to go with uh, Yui. I think Yui will handle the uh, conditions better. She can, uh, hits with a lot more spin on the, the backhand as well. She can hit under the ball and over the ball, so I think she might handle the, the conditions a, a little bit better today. It's an interesting matchup. It should be good. Being number one in the world, I guess you're favoured to uh, show what you what you got. So, Greg, uh, just a little bit about your background and uh, how you got into wheelchair tennis. I've been in the game uh, quite a long while. I started in 1986, so I was doing a coaching course in America and, and did uh, some wheelchair tennis. So uh, it's just something that uh, went off my head, seemed like a good idea, that it's something I wanted to be involved with. And in that stage, the game was pretty much uh, in its uh, recreation stage. It wasn't all that professional. A couple of years later, a few tournaments were set up around the world where players uh, came and played. And uh, the first tournament in Australia was 1988, the bicentennial year, which we played at Melbourne Park, which is also the year that opened. And that was pretty much our first uh, Melbourne Open, Australian Open. And fast forward to uh, 30 years later, it's a, it's a full professional sport with uh, 150, 160 ITF tournaments around the world, played in all the Grand Slams and uh, full-time Travelling players, coaches, uh, physios, a whole lot. So it's changed a lot when uh, Anthony and myself first started on the tour. Yeah, Crumpy's been around for a very long time and knows the sport inside and out. He's, uh, he's been a great, great person for me um, and a great person for wheelchair tennis in general, especially Australian tennis. He's, he's there for all those hard days. Um, so I take my hat off to you, Crumpy. I just bought you a new hat too. <laughs> So uh, KG serving first there, already having trouble with the, the wind. It's going to be pretty tough for servers, but if you can serve well today, you're probably going to do all right. But uh, kg has got the serve, serving into the wind, which is a, a very, very strong northerly. As you can see there, uh, that serve is pretty tough. Double fault.
As I was saying, if you overhit that that shot when you're going with the wind, that's so uh, going to go well out. Uh, up the other end, you need to really hit it hard to get it over and deep. Score's actually 15.30. That was a nice shot. conditions out there at the moment. It's the uh, second double fault for KG this game there, so serving is key today. If you hit a good serve, a high percentage of first serves, you're going to be in good shape, but uh, yeah, tough start for KG. Two double faults, but uh, got a break point against her. Actually, a good hold. Yeah, from uh, uh, love uh, yeah. fifteen forty. Uh, yeah, really good hold from that position. So, uh, good effort first up, changing ends quickly. Yeah. You inter interesting to see the uh, young Japanese serving from this end. So, yeah, uh, you had a good uh, tournament last week, winning the tournament singles and doubles. So, uh, at this stage of the year, she's had uh, five singles wins, no losses, and uh, three doubles and no losses as well. So, a perfect start to the year for her. So, uh, Anthony, when you were playing, what was your uh, preferred surface? They, uh, they play on a few different surfaces around the world. What was your preferred surface, and uh, why did you uh, prefer that, and which ones did you have the most success on? Uh, yeah. Yeah, my preferred surface was uh, always the Australian Open surfaces. Um, coming up on learning how to use it, uh, it only just got better with the Australian Open as well. So you had uh, some success on the uh, clay courts as well? Yeah, so there's clay, uh, there's clay court, there's Auntie car, and there's the synthetic grass out there. And before they went to Wimbledon, uh, I was one of the 
test pilots, I, I guess, uh, saying in the wheelchair, development of seeing if we could actually play on the grass for Wimbledon. And that was out in Nottingham. Yeah, so now we play out on, uh, on all the surfaces that, that are available. Uh, the, look, the best surface for me is the, the surface they're playing on now. I think it has just the true balance. It's got good grip on the ball. But I also love playing on clay courts. As the clay courts, you get the slide and the four-wheel slide. A bit of a rev head, so uh, there's nothing like going, getting a bit sideways. So in 2002, you won the uh, World Championships on clay court uh, in Italy with uh, David Hall, and that was uh, a great effort on the clay courts as well, so we didn't uh, get all that much practice before we went over there. Yeah, it was. That was the best win of my career, uh, the World Team Cup. It's equivalent to the Davis Cup. I think that wind's picking up. <laughs> it's uh, pretty tough. Wind's probably blowing about 35 to 40 and gusting up to about 40 knots, I would say. Yeah, I had some uh, really good wins in the wind. Uh, as I said before, you know, playing the internationals, they don't see this kind of wind. So, and we see it all the time. So had some really good wins. Apart from the uh, women's event here today, what other events are going on here? Uh, it's the men's semi-finals on after this. Uh, temperatures is going to be really good for them. Uh, there's also the quads and the juniors that are going to be playing. So for uh, those of you uh, viewing here, some of you may or may not be aware of the rules. So um, I'm going to do the big hand pass over to Anthony and say, uh, what are the key rules of wheelchair tennis? And uh, anything uh, that makes wheelchair tennis a bit uh, different to able bod tennis? Uh, look, the main, the main rule, as you probably have been seeing and going, oh, there's two bounces happening. Uh, so the first bounce has to land inside the boundaries of the singles court, and then the second bounce can land anywhere it wants. And you have the option to get the ball on the first bounce or the second bounce. Uh, another main, main rule is that you're not allowed to stand up in your wheelchair. Some of these players can actually, you know, they have, they're an amputee or uh, they, they've got a little bit of feeling in their legs and they can stand up. So they... You know, you're just not allowed to have your your bottom off the chair when you hit, when you're making contact with the ball. And what about uh, who can play wheelchair tennis? Who can play wheelchair tennis? Anyone anyone who has some sort of disability, uh, basically one one component uh, that's in their lower extremities that that they can and then they can play with that. Um, the rules are always sort of changing. Look, it started off when I first started. It was a lot of spinal cord injury. Uh, then, the, then the amps come in. When I say amps, uh, I'm saying I mean amputees. And then there's uh, spina bifida, the cerebral palsy. The, the list just goes on. They're just really trying to overcompensate for that wind. And right then, there was a bit of a lull in the wind. So that's why she overhit the ball.
Another thing that's really changed is uh, the chairs. We'll get into that pretty soon. Shot out. So Anthony was saying the uh, you're allowed two bounces, but you'll see uh, a lot of the, the girls here today trying to get the ball on the first bounce to play more aggressive. Also get the ball up the other end of the court a lot earlier. And the men uh, more so, they play very, very aggressive, hitting the ball deeper in the court. So there's less chance of a, a second bounce in the court. So look for it later on with the men's semi-final. One bounce tennis is uh, the way to go. The involved like the, the game has just changed dramatically. When I first started playing, um, everyone was playing out in the, the back of the court, uh, running over the ball kids and the and the umpires out there, and that everyone was getting it on two bounces. Uh, these these days, uh, the chairs are a lot faster and lighter. Uh, everyone's a, they, they're full professionals, so they're training all the time. They're faster in their chair, so they, that's that's what gives them the ability to actually get it on the on the first bounce and take the time away from the opponent. So on court, we've got uh, Yui leading uh, three-one. She's uh, held serve, got an early break, so uh, looking pretty good for her. Great return. Greg, I've been out of the game for a little bit. Um, tell me, tell me about the, the the schedule that these guys play. The schedule, well, they pretty much follow the uh, the sun, which is uh, not a bad sport to play. They they're starting off the first tournaments of the year uh, within Australia, as in the able body game. So it pretty much follows or shadows the able bod game around the world. So after they finish the summer tour here, they head to America for some tournaments into Asia and then in the middle parts of the year they're in, in Europe, French Open, etc., Wimbledon, and then work their way back through America and finish up the end of year masters back in Europe as well. So it's it's a full year, pretty much forty five weeks of the year, forty six weeks of the year, a short off season, and they're back into it again. Most of the, the top players are playing twenty, twenty plus tournaments, give or take a bit. So they're on the road uh, a lot of weeks of the year. The good thing about living in Australia is living in Australia. The bad thing is it, the travel and the travel times. And uh, when Anthony was playing, he, he spent uh, pretty much the whole three to six months every year living overseas and coming back uh, for the summer. So it's a, it's a pretty grueling uh, tour and schedule. Yes, it was. It's very tough. One of my main reasons uh, of retiring, because spending that much time overseas, you just didn't see family, friends, and I guess I missed them. So 
another break for Yui. Uh, Cagey's making way too many errors off that first ball. Needs to uh, settle down, hit a lot more uh, shots in the court and start to construct some points. But uh, too many first ball errors, which is uh, not going to help in these conditions. Keep the ball in play longer and uh, build the point. So uh, apart from playing at the, uh, on the tour, what other uh, opportunities are there for uh, players to get involved in uh, wheelchair tennis? A lot of great, uh, Crumpy introduced me to the hospital system uh, years ago. So we, do, we started doing a, a gig out in the Royal Children's Hospital, uh, which is one of the big children's hospitals here in Melbourne. And uh, yeah, I think we started that about five years ago, and from there, uh, I think we've found about two or three good junior players. As I said, Crumpy picked me out of a hospital. And pretty much changed my life. Um, then there's also the grassroots of, of, of things. You might want to go into that a bit more. Of that company? Yeah, so we introduced tennis uh, to people in hospital. They've had a, an injury or the Royal Children's Hospital there. And if some of the, the kids would, uh, or patients would like to continue with tennis, then we have a, uh, a development program on Tuesday nights at Melbourne Park at the uh, Tennis Centre, which Anthony runs. And if they uh, want to continue more, they can play some more low-level uh, tournaments, local tournaments, and then so forth. They can get into some uh, low-level ITF tournaments as well and, and so forth from there and uh, build their way through to playing some tournaments overseas and um, maybe a Paralympics or... Uh, represent the country in a world championships as well. And sometimes not even about how far you want to go with the sport if you want to be professional in light. It's also about just the fun and the and the socialism of it. There's, there's so many players out there that uh, they just go to the tournaments. Uh, they're friendly tournaments. Um, Besides being like the, having the open draw, there's also other grades um, in the tennis. So there's, you know, there's this is open, which is the best of the best, and then you've got, you know, a, B grade and A grade. Just some uh, development grades as well. Yeah, which um, are just so keeps people interested, and you not get, you know, you're not going to go out there and just get smashed on the first round. So on uh, Cordy and Cagey's having a, a really really tough time with the win there, uh, a serve struggling and. Uh, just, just too many errors off that first ball. Needs to get a lot more at play and, and keep working through it. She had some good matches during the week. It wasn't as windy, but um, you know, you've got to deal with it and uh, be more competitive, more balls in. That, that brings me to the next point. Like, If the wind wasn't here and the heat wasn't here, uh, how would these guys match up? Or girls, I should say. Yeah. Well, yeah, Cagey's a good player. There's, there's no argument with that. But she likes, uh, she's a nice big free hitter of the ball, likes that condition's good. So when it's a bit off, she struggles to find the centre of the racket and the, the errors are coming. Um, I did have a hit with her during the week and uh, yeah, she hits the ball great. But um, yeah, likes conditions pretty, pretty still. Yeah, it's a good shot. It's probably the longest rally we've had there. Good job. The Japanese is just really solid, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. She's been around. She's only young, but she's been around a, a good number of years and uh, done a couple of Paralympic Games. So she's a, a very, very good competitor.
She's just really struggling with her, her serves. Just can't get that distance. Another double fault. They're starting to uh, mount up a bit, and it's going to be quite costly. to change up some tactics here. I think the biggie is just to slow down a bit and uh, you know, start to hit a few in the court, go for a big target, start to uh, hit a lot more on the court and start to feel good about hitting the ball in and then uh, build the confidence up again. Second set.
That was nearly a top spin drop shot. Yeah, better point from uh, KG. Start to get a few balls going. Much, much better. Is Yui moving forward? serve the best at the moment, isn't it, really? Yeah, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> you get that first serve. First serves are good. But, uh, again, too many second serves and way too many double faults from both girls. There you go. Using the local conditions there. Exactly what you need to do. You know, whatever wins you the point in these conditions is uh, the best way. Yeah, that was a good forehand. She's playing strong. That's good from Yuri. Notice that uh, continual moving the whole time. She's hitting, recovering, maintaining good court position, always moving into the ball to play an next shot. Good tennis. So it's hot out here, isn't it, Crumpy? Yeah, we're under cover and uh, it's plenty hot out here, but uh, on the tennis court, um, it's, it's, it's going to get tougher as the afternoon goes on or the morning goes on as well. So explain something to me, Crumpy. It says it's 33, nearly 34 degrees at the moment. And uh, it's on the local weather site, it says it feels like 22.5. I've never got that. Who, who actually says this stuff? Yeah, I think they measure it from indoors. So we're making a, another good serve here. Yui's moving up onto the uh, the mid-court ball and uh, making a pretty good put away. So she uh, takes advantage of a mid-court ball straight away. That's good tennis again. Good Take time away game. from your opponent. Good job. Yui's doing a pretty good job hitting into uh, the wind again. I've mentioned that uh, a million times, but uh, keeping a pretty good length on a, a ball uh, in the court. Really tough wind, but a length of shot's very good. Again, heavy ball. Good job. Yeah, she's just got her, hasn't she? It's just, um, I think everything's in her head at the moment with KG. I think if she, all she needs to do is just take some of that pace off and, you know, Get the ball back in the middle and let the wind do the work. Yeah, yep. Keep it in play. A bit more length, but uh, at the moment, you is just uh, picking off the mid-court balls pretty comfortably. Just going for too much, I think. That's uh, the second one she's gone out to that corner. and 
up and down the middle in days like today, isn't it, Crumpy? Absolutely. Big targets, big targets. Keep the errors to a minimum. Sometimes it's really hard playing with the wind. Um, you don't get that ball timing right. It's just really difficult. Sometimes it's easy to hit into the wind because you can just swing at it. So it's a, a good start from you again, an early break in the second set. Uh, kg has got some work to do to get back in here. I mean, it's setting an early breakdown. It's uh, looking a bit tough. So she didn't do too much with that shot and got that point quite easily. Better start from KG this game. She's got a good start at the end of 30, so needs to keep building on this to get the break straight back. That was a great serve too. That looked like it was just going out by you know, 10 miles and uh, it just bounced right in at the line. And uh, it's good length to serve, using conditions well. She's got really good touch, hasn't she? Yeah, really, really good hands. Uh, a lot of girls rely on a lot of power, but she's got uh, good hands. Hits with a lot of spin as well, which is uh, pretty good in these conditions. breaks here, which is uh, good to see. Hopefully she can come back in this match. That was a good game. Good game to come back on. Yeah, yeah. Starting to get in the points now. Top of my head, uh, Cage has had a, a bit of trouble holding Sir from that end, so uh, see how she goes. Yep. Talking about the chair development, uh, how, how's it, how have you seen it change in? All the years Oh, gee, uh, people used to uh, play in their, their day chair, the one they used to get a, go to the work in or uh, go shopping in and just used to play sport in it as well. So now um, they started building uh, tennis you know, made chairs just designed for the game of tennis. But now the, uh, the materials they use and the, the development in them is, is pretty expensive, but um, yeah, cutting edge as well. So most of the players now have a, a molded seat, so like a racing car seat, so it's molded to that person, and only one person could, can fit in that wheelchair. And they're worth anywhere from a good chair these days is probably $8,000, and they probably go up to, 
thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. Yeah, that's just, probably US dollars yeah, too. So the the world's your oyster, but if you want to compete, you've got to have the the good gear. Hopefully, she can serve well here. Keep moving, can't just hit and sit there. Yeah, my, my first chair was, uh, it was a, well, I, I, we first got into a steel chair and then it uh, went into alloy. And That's a good point. Good tennis from both girls. Good length, good pushing from Yui. Yeah, so I bought my, my chair for $400 off uh, the number one girl at the time, was, which was Danny DeToro. Um, and that chair at the, was a, like just a normal day chair, and we had to put washers to get actual camber in the wheels. As you can see, the big wheels, uh, the main wheels that they're pushing, are on a slight camber. They're pointing outwards at the bottom. That was a good point. That was a great point. Uh, yeah, so uh, the reason why we have camber on those wheels is it actually makes you turn faster. It's like a racing car when they have the camber on the front wheels and the back wheels, uh, out, slightly out depending on what track it is, and that actually makes you turn faster or slower. The camber can range from around 16 degrees to up to extremes like 24 degrees. Um, we also, if you can see the back wheel at the back, uh, that was only introduced probably, what, 20 years ago or so, Crappy? Yeah, about that. Yeah, um, and the reason why we've got the back wheel is like when you lean backwards on shots, um, you're not falling out backwards, and you can also, it also allows you to bring those main wheels um, a lot more forward, so then, then you get more push on the wheel. So another break of surf for Yui. She uh, goes straight back, and again, Keiji struggling to hold surf from the, the far end of the court. Ball's going to bounce on the other court with that. No, uh, it's good uh, pushing from you again there. Tough again. The, the ball's going all over the place there, but she maintained the uh, control of the shot. Kept moving the chair and uh, come up with the goods there. But the last shot she made, cross court, putting her opponent under pressure and uh, come up with a goodie. Mm. So not trying to hit too many winners, just you know, constant good shot after good shot is going to uh, do the damage. Smart tennis, that wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, she's deep, wide in the court, hit it back deep, re got court position again, and um, come up with another you know, forced error again, not trying to hit winners.
It's a big point here for Cage. He needs this one to uh, keep hanging in there in the match, otherwise we might be a bit too far away. Huge point. Just that length. Uh, she just does it so well. Again, hit him with the win. That couldn't go anywhere, so to control that, that's a, that's a great job. Yeah, good, uh, good court sense. She, I think she sensed her player coming in just then. And Four one, uh, it's starting to uh, leak a bit now. Uh, I thought it was uh, it was going to be a bit more of a closer contest today. I thought the the wind's always a good equaliser, so um, players taking their, a bit of a break at the moment, getting some drinks to keep them going. It's a really good tournament for a lead up tournament for the Aussie Open, especially today's temperatures are. Now going into the 40s, uh, next week could be exactly the same. And it's good to see the Australian Open didn't close the roofs on all the players like yesterday. So everyone got uh, equal, equal exposure to the sun. I always think it's a bit unfair having the roof closed on all the top players and then, you know, the poor, poor old soul at the backcourt is... Uh, you, who might get through to the semis or whatever, and then they get indoors. Uh, it was a hot day yesterday, but the uh, good players, that's why you do your pre-season, keep them nice and fit. Cagey's looking like she doesn't even want to win it at the moment. She just needs to get that confidence up. Use that wind. That was a great shot. Great shot. It didn't try to overplay it. Used the conditions again. Just heavy ball, but uh, making those one and two shots after the serve is so important. It's great that uh, Bar TV Sports has come out and actually televising this event. Uh, getting more exposure for wheelchair tennis uh, is always a great thing. So uh, hopefully you're uh, enjoying some, uh, watching some of the tennis here. I'm sure we can uh, see it uh, more and more. What's the men's finals, semis finals uh, today and tomorrow as well? Got 30 all here. Cagey's uh, in a little trouble, to say the least. A lot of trouble. Side again. 
Yui's just, she just hits that ball quite well, doesn't do anything with it. And just puts enough on it just to put KG under trouble. Push. Really lucky shot right there, but it yeah, works. A bit of local knowledge, but take that 5 1. <laughs> 5 1. She's going to have to pull something out of the mm. hat here. Yeah, Kaji needs to work uh, a little bit harder. Just can't let the match go. Chances are she'll be playing her in the next week at the Australian Open. So needs to dig deep here and get a few more games. Just carry that forward to next week, that confidence, and that you can compete. That's a good get. That's yep, a great get. Great shot. Bit hard to drop shot uh, with the wind, isn't it? No, no, it's uh, good tennis again. Uh, good put court position from Yui, uh, getting back nice and deep. Sets up for the next shot, so good tennis. 30 love. Double match point here. I think uh, the young Japanese is on her way to the Open final. And uh, still undefeated for 2018, so it's a heck of a start to the year. Ooh, not after that shot. She might come back. Don't think so. Okay. <laughs> She's nervous, Crumpy. Uh, she'll be right. She'll be right. Uh, a one hell of a left-handed serve. It finished up on the other side of the court. So uh, KG did a great job uh, just to get that back in play. Match point again. And that's game, set and match. 6-1, uh, 6-1 yeah. six, one, six, one to Yui. Well on our way to uh, another final, and we'll see you again uh, tomorrow and uh, also in the Australian Open next week. Uh, we've also got the, the men's semi-finals. The men's semi-final coming on there. Coming up, yep. Just like to say thanks to Hume Tennis Centre, Bar TV Sports. And, and you, sure. Greg. Thank you very much.
Good morning. Welcome to Melbourne Open, sponsored by Stockland Real Estate. This is the uh, first semi-final of the men's tennis today. Today we have from Argentina, we have Gustavo Fernandez, and we have from Sweden, Stefan Olsen. Uh, these guys have uh, been playing uh, for a number of years, so uh, they played last week in Sydney, and both these players will be playing in the Australian Open uh, next week as well. Welcome, Greg. Welcome. We've got another person on uh, commentating today. We have Heath Davidson. And uh, he's uh, number five uh, quad tennis player in the world from Australia. He won the uh, gold medal in uh, doubles in Rio with uh, Dylan Alcott. So, uh, Heath, tell us a, a little bit about your uh, journey in tennis and uh, quad tennis. You, uh, you start off as a junior and uh, tell us where you've uh, taken it from there. Yeah, as you said, I did start as a junior. I um, started playing tennis when I was about 14, just went down to my local club and met a, met a guy named Marco and uh, he started coaching me and then the more I got involved in that, then I um, went down and met Greg who is obviously asking me questions at the moment and got involved a bit with Tennis Australia and the development side of things and um, playing junior tennis, we used to look up to guys like David Hall and Anthony Bonacurso who's sitting to my right. And, um, yeah, obviously played tennis as a junior all through that, played World Teams Cup and then um, had a bit of time off and came back about four years ago and started playing again and I've had a pretty successful run since then. So just um, really happy to be back playing and um, the results are going well. So it was a pretty timely comeback there. So uh, you have uh, Dylan playing with you as well. So it was good to have a, a couple of quad players. So you, you timed your run nicely for the Rio games and... Uh Looking forward to Japan. Is that still on the, on the cards? Yeah, I did time my run well. I feel like I've sort of just snuck in and um, pulled away a gold medal, which is very lucky. But, um, yeah, the, the goal is to continue on until Tokyo and hopefully can um, do a little bit better in the singles and me and Dylan can uh, defend our gold medal in the doubles. So, yeah. Where did you uh, finish up with your singles in uh, Rio? Uh, lost the quarterfinal to a Anthony, uh, sorry, Andy Lapthorne, who is currently number two in the world. And he made the final, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He played Dylan okay. Alcott in the final. Not a bad feat, mate. Especially just coming back into sport, the sport again. Yeah, I feel like um, after a proper lead up to Tokyo, I think that I'll be able to do a little bit better in the singles, and um, hopefully we can have an All Australian final, and we can both be playing off for uh, gold and silver. So, um, just uh, the current players that are out there at the moment, just before they start play. Uh, Gustavo Fernandez, uh, his current ranking is number one. His best, best singles ranking is number one. So, and he's been, he's been number one for a, a full year now, hasn't he? Pretty much a full year, yeah. yeah. And uh, Stefan Olsen, he's from Sweden. Uh, he's, he's the guy, not on screen at the moment, the other guy. And his current ranking is number six in the world. His best singles ranking uh, was number two, and that was in 2011. But uh, he's playing pretty well, good tennis. Heath, what do you, what do you think of the matchup here today? Uh, it'll be a really good matchup. Um, Gustavo is just fearless out there, just is a weapon when it comes down to wheelchair tennis, loves it. Um, Olsen's coming off a big year last year. He won Wimbledon, which is huge, and um, I think the grass suits his game. But my tip, for, my tip for today, I think, is going to be to scar Gustavo just with the slower courts. And he just hits a really nice, really nice top spin. So. Again, if you've just uh, joined us and you didn't watch the women's semis finals, uh, today is really, really hot. It's probably around 35 degrees at the moment. And the wind is blowing about 40 to 50 knots, you know, up to about 80 kilometres an hour. So it's, uh, it's, it's tough conditions out here today. So it's going to be survival of the fittest and survival of the weather conditions. Uh, Gustavo here, he's been playing tennis for a good lot of years. He's played as a, a junior in the World Team Cup. I'm not sure if Heath, did you play against him as a junior? Um, I think I played one, one World Team's Cup where he was there. We didn't actually play each other, but um, he has become a much better player since he was a junior. Yeah, there's one of the uh, claims to fame of uh, Dylan Alcott. Uh, played him as a junior and actually uh, beat him, so he's got a one-love uh, record against Gustavo, so he's going to dine out on that forever. He said, I'm never going to play him again, so uh, he claims he's the only player that's never lost to him. So uh, He also loves telling everybody that he's never lost to yeah, Gustavo. Wow. <laughs>
How's your preparation for the Aussie Open coming along? Really good. Um, I played Sydney, Sydney International last week. Um, lost in the semi-final against David Wagner, who I'm playing in the semi-final tonight here. Uh, but me and Dylan had some success and won the uh, doubles. So pretty happy with the way I'm playing at the moment and um, really keen to get next week underway. It's my favourite favourite tournament of the year. That's your uh, second Australian Open. You got in on a wild card uh, last year and this year uh, direct entry or wild card again? No, yeah, last year I was ranked 31 and got the wild card because I was a hometown boy and this year I got the wild card again but my ranking's five so it was a little bit easier to give it to me this year and um, hopefully uh, this year I can just go out and do well and compete as hard as I possibly can and get a few better results than last year. What's your uh, 12 months uh, tour look like? Pretty flat out again this year. I think um, my coach and myself, Francois, uh, we've worked out. It looks like I'm going to be away for about 24, 26 weeks of the year and do all the big tournaments and tour Europe and stuff, which is um, good fun. So it's a full-time job and I love what I do and I wouldn't give it up for anything at the moment. Not a bad way to be, living the dream. Pretty much, mate. It's, uh, not very many people get to travel the world and hit tennis balls for a living, so really happy. All right, we're just about to get on the way here. Last year at the wild card, uh, when you played the Australian Open, you nearly actually took Dylan Alcott down. Yeah, it was a really st slow start in the first round, but um, lost, lost in a tiebreaker in the second set, and um, since then that gave me a little bit more confidence, and... Towards the end of last year, I started to get wins over the top four guys in the world, um, which is good. I've beaten David Wagner, who's currently world number one, a couple of times at the end of last year, and Lucas Satole. And so confidence is up, and I'm um, really hoping I can play well. I love, love um, Melbourne Park, and it's a bit of a home court advantage, and having a lot of family and friends there that will be able to cheer me on and get around, get around me, I hope will get me over the line this year. Good luck for the year. Look forward to it. Thanks, mate. Totally. Look forward to training with you. I train with Heath. You do, Bono, and um, one day I will be, mate. One day. One day. One day. And then I'll come out of retirement. That's one way of taking out your winning against your player, just take him out. Yeah, then the warm up just beat him with a surf. <laughs> as long as you make it look like an accident, it's all right. <laughs> How fast are these guys actually serving, Heath? Um, I think most so the top top eight guys probably can whack first serves down at about 150. Um, Gerard from Belgium, he's got the fastest serve in a wheelchair, and I think that's uh, close to 100, 180k. So that's that's big, but um, he doesn't pull them out too many times. And for us to do that, it has to be perfect conditions indoors. But um, it's just, for us, it's all about precision when we serve. Obviously, because we don't have the 220k serve, if we can pick our spots, it makes it a whole lot easier to get cheap points. I don't think we're going to see too many big serves today if the guys are going to take some heat off the serve, hit a lot of spin, hopefully keep their first serve percentage up as well. Yeah, and I think the slider out wide today in the wind will work really well. So I think you might see Stefan Olsen today. He's got a really nice slider and... Um, I think you might use that a bit, and Gustavo's just got a really heavy kicker, so... Well, I thought if you just hit the ball up in the air, the wind, the wind would just take it at 180 k's in the, into the service box. Mate, in these conditions, I would just be aiming for the middle of the box and hoping I can get it in there, to be honest with you. So today's field, or today's tournament here, we're lucky enough we've got nine of the top ten guys from around the world, so... Uh, yeah, you don't get much stronger events than that anywhere. So uh, they're all in preparation for the Australian Open next week. So, um, you know, pretty high standard of tennis in the men's and the ladies. Looks like Gustavo's going to serve first. Get the ball rolling. Good luck, boys. He just looks so big in his chair. He's a man mountain, that guy. No wonder he hits the ball so hard.
Anthony, who's your tip today on this one? Yeah, I'm going to go with Heath. I think uh, Gustavo's going to do it. Um, he just he just looks like he's always got the goods. Uh, but again, Heath might play a factor here. Depends where these guys have been training in the in the over Christmas time. So I'm tipping the Heath's a bit better in Argentina than Sweden this time of the year. You would think so. It's really good tennis. As you can see, a lot of the guy, these guys are just getting it on the first bounce. Uh, as I explained in the rules in the last game, um, you can get two, the option of hitting it on the first bounce or the second bounce. In wheelchair tennis, the first bounce must land inside the boundaries of the court. And obviously, if you're taking it on the first bounce, you're giving your opponent less time to recover and um, get into position. So a much better idea than waiting and waiting for the second bounce. That's a great backhand, isn't it? Oh, reminds me of my old days. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, the return wasn't that bad. It was a good commercial return and uh, just slightly short. And he's uh, moved up pretty quickly and said, I'll have one of those. Thank you. That wind is so strong. How do you both feel about the um, not not hitting your ball, your first ball toss? If do you think that you should be forced to hit it, or ah uh, no, nah, I think if it's not in the right spot, you want to see the best tennis. So if, you, if it's not in the right spot, then well, how can you hit the ball? Very true. Yeah, and especially on a day like today, it's so windy that you're never going to throw that ball in the perfect spot because one second it's blowing 80, 90 kilometres an hour, and the next second it's blowing 10. So probably the only real people it's going to affect is the one that's the recreation player. Your top players are really struggle from that. And what Anthony said, it's only when conditions are bad. So you want to see good tennis. Um, I don't think it's much is going to come out of it. A good first game for uh, Stefan here. Um, looks like he's got Gustavo. 
just a little bit shaken. Yeah, he's uh, normally a, a return serve fairly aggressively. He's well inside the baseline when he's returning. So uh, from that end of the court, that's uh, that's a pretty good start there. Gets the ball really early, gets the ball back up the other end of the court. That's uh, good tennis, very good tennis. Also does help that Stefan Olsen does have one of the best slices in wheelchair tennis. It's very, very effective. That's too good. Well, then saying that, Gustavo has probably the best topspin oh. top backhand. Way so too good. That's going to be a battle of the backhands. Topspin versus slice. That was a great return. Slice returns back down the middle, deep, and Gustavo just propped up in his chair and ripped a cross court backhand. Yeah, good court speed. Good court speed. Well, if that's anything to go by, it's going to be a long day out on the court. It's going to be some tired boys and uh, tired us under a little tent. That's almost blowing away. So while they're changing ends, um, Bono, you trained with me a couple of times a week down at tennis, and you mentioned that the day that I beat you, you might come out of retirement. I reckon you should come out of retirement anyway, mate, and get back on the circuit with the boys. As I explained before, I miss my family too much, and being away uh, you know, 24 to 30, 35 weeks a year, it's, I've been there and done that, and uh, you know, I've got a young family, a uh, young daughter. No, thank you. You can, you can enjoy that limelight. Thank you. As you can see, it is blowing an absolute gale. Stefan just threw the ball uh, in front of his wheelchair and it's ended up three metres behind him. So, uh, Anthony, uh, you see uh, Stefan Olsen's uh, set-up serving position on the second court there. Why does he do that? It looks more like a, uh, a double set-up position, but for singles he's sitting quite wide. What's the, uh, the ra rationale behind that? Well, it just, it just gives him the option to serve out really wide and take your player out. It's so hard in wheelchair tennis to go from outside wide of the court and come in really quickly, especially if you do the good old one-two cross court. And on the first court, he's setting up in more of a traditional position. Yeah, because he's sitting up that way because if he, when he serves, uh, to turn that chair around 180 degrees, which most players try and do, uh, spin you around, um, he, he's got a better option to be able to get around and actually hit a really good shot. So if he was to serve wide on that juice, juice side, to get back across uh, to cover that down the line shot, it's just really hard. So he's pretty much protecting his back end over there, so he's getting turned around and uh, doesn't have to flick off his back end. Exactly. There's also nothing better than rolling onto a crisp forehand. wind just died then. So Heath, when you're serving, do you set up uh, in a similar position right on top of the baseline or a little bit further back off the baseline? Uh, these guys these guys being in the open division are a little bit faster than myself, so I sit about a metre behind, just gives me that little bit of extra time after I serve to get into position on both sides. Uh, 
I'm glad you didn't ask me that question, Crumpy. It's I serve to get it in. What Bono is not saying, Bono has one of the best serves that I've ever seen on a wheel, on a tennis court. Um, his second serve is very, very good. Thanks, Heath. That's all right, Bono. Anytime, mate. Slice just stays so low, Crumpy. How how does he manage to get the slice to stay so low? Well, he's obviously uh, pretty good at it and spent a lot of time on, on his slice, but he gets it so early and the ball's got some um, momentum on the up speed so he can get a lot of work on the ball on the way down. So getting the ball early is a big key to it. So you're not trying to generate too much power. That was a great, great tennis. From the uh, view from behind the court, you actually, uh, Stefan Olsen is so, so deep. He's not even in uh, shot at the moment, but when he returns, you'll see him move right inside the baseline to get that ball as early as he can, well inside. There he goes, using momentum to recover. He missed out that time. Oh, that only just missed, though. Great serve on that one. He really kicked that ball nice and high. That was good. Too good. Too good by Stefan Olsen there. Uh, again, getting the ball early. A little uh, chance here to get an early break. That was cricket. He would be clean bowled. Bit of an air swing there by Gustavo. Don't say that very often, but the conditions are tough out there. We've been talking about. It's also really hot, as well as being very windy. So, very tough out there for the boys. Don't be too happy with that. He's uh, had a break point and uh, was right on his rack, and he's just overcooked it a bit. So, uh, most players are struggling so far to, to hold serve from that end today. So, it would have been a, a, a good break for him to get. And more importantly, a good hold. Stefan Olsen won't be very happy with that. As Crumpy mentioned, he had a couple of break points and um, missed two, two returns. So hopefully he can get back to it next game.
It's 2-1 to Gustavo. So, Heath, in your opinion, who has the best serve in men's tennis, wheelchair tennis? You already said uh, Anthony, but we know that's not true. So, uh, currently playing. Currently playing, probably Joe, um, Gerard from uh, Belgium. It's he's he actually sits really tall in his wheelchair, and he's got a really good kick out, and he can really get those flat ones down the tee going as well. So, Anthony, who's got the best slice back end? Look, I'm old school. Uh, a lot of people probably don't even know. Uh, David Hall, I would David say, Hall. has got the best slice backhand in wheelchair tennis. I think he, I think he just kicked it off, from, and then people have just copied it. And you know, but Dave Hall, you just can't go past it. It was flat. It was low. It was hard to get. Back to you, Heath. Best forehand. Best forehand. I've, I think probably Gustavo's because it just has so much top spin. And it's the same every ball. Um, but actually, I was going to ask you, Crumpy, what, who do you think has the best forehand in wheelchair tennis? I'm going to ask me. Uh, I think the, the standards, everyone hits a, a good ball there. It's the, the difference between the good guys and the bad guys technically now is, is a, a lot, lot slimmer. So it comes down to who's the fittest and who's particularly tough on the day. You know, most of them hit the ball pretty well. I don't think you're going to get to a top 10 unless you, you've got a pretty sound forehand or backhand or serves. But, um, yeah, they're all pretty good. Uh, yeah, I like the way Stefan Olsen plays. Gets a lot of racket head speed. He can hit under it and over it off the backhand. Yeah, Stefan Olsen would probably, want to, probably be one of my favourite players in the um, open division. But anyone in the top eight, just as Crumpy said, um, huge control over the ball, hit very good quality and... Um, Really tough to beat on any given day for any of them. As Gustavo just rockets a short off backhand off the return. That's very impressive. Gustavo doesn't seem to play safe too often, Anthony. He, um, he's always going for it. Do you reckon that's a, a good thing? or? No, he don't get to number one in the world by being safe. So um, whatever he's doing is definitely working. So, And look, most of the time it, it's going in. So, you know, he puts a lot of pressure on, there, on the opponent. Like that. You know, just simple. That was not much on it. Just a nice little angle. Yeah, nice game to get that. Uh, looks like that hole that Stefan didn't get in that last game against Gustavo might hurt him now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Three one. Again from that end of the court, uh, the southern end of the court, she's uh, been tough to hold serve, and uh, there's another break down there. Gustavo was lucky to get it away with it in the previous one, but that's why you're number one, isn't it? Gustavo's using the wind really well. He's getting a lot of top spin up this end of the court and the ball is just carrying, which is putting Olsen under a lot of pressure because he's taking shots above head height. That's the 
beautiful commentary team. It is. Clearly the best looking one is definitely uh, Greg Crumb in the blue shirt. Too sure if that went over or not, we uh, can't yeah, see from here. Didn't go over. Very risky shot to take. Yeah, Drop shot. To, uh, keep playing some solid tennis and leave the trick shots alone. He's, he's doing a good job the first few games. Keep getting back to his bakes. He's Big ace there by Gustavo down the tee. Great tennis all around. Great lob, great pick up. Right hold. Four one to Gustavo. So a bit of a quiz question for you, Crumpy, seeing you've been around the uh, wheelchair tennis circuit for a long time. Which male player has held the number one ranking for the longest? David Hall. <laughs> oh, here's one for you, Bono. Oh. Which female tennis player has held the number one ranking for the longest. That is very easy. That's very easy. Uh, her name is Esther Vigier. And if you're listening, how do you doing? Do you know how many matches she won consecutively? <sighs> 400, no, 603, 693, 698. 665 or something like that. It was ridiculous. It was over 400, eight. 460? 480? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, something like that. It was silly. It was over eight years or something. She hadn't lost a match. It was unbelievable. Still think if she came back today, she would very easily be one of the elite and top female tennis players. She's very professional as well. Did all the right things on and off she the court. Had, um, she was match point down in uh, Beijing and uh, got out of it. She was match point down in Masters and got out of that to the same girl. And uh, but the same girl retired shortly after. <laughs> There's a big cross court forehand by Gustavo. There's something about the Netherlands, though. They just seem to produce really good tennis players. Because they also had Rod Robin Ammerland, who was up there competing with like David Hall, and him pretty much controlled the circuit for so long. And Esther Vigiers um, was up there for so long. And once Esther retired, you've got um, Yiska and Anik and all the ladies still carrying on with the awesome tennis coming out of the Netherlands. And I don't know. I thought Australia did pretty good, mate. We had... Dave Hall, Danny DeToro, Dylan Alcott. East Davidson goes all right occasionally. So yeah. some number ones there as well. We 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 have done pretty well over the over the years. Good tennis, great tennis. He's really putting the pressure on at the moment. Yeah, Gustavo Gustavo's definitely put the um, foot on the pedal and he really wants this really wants this um, first set.
Five one to Gustavo. It's amazing what uh, you know, Stefan Olsen be held against uh, Gustavo before. You know, it would have been three two, different ball game, but he's just uh, losing it a little bit. Yeah, he had a break point. Uh, yeah, it could be all tied up, but it's uh, a couple of points here or there, and it uh, makes a diff big difference on the scorecard. He's uh, <laughs> in quite a bit of trouble. He wasn't playing that bad. He was playing some really good tennis. Uh, nearly had the upper hand, but uh, started to leak a bit. Just missed that volley there. Just goes to show how strong Gustavo is against hitting against that wind and just being able to rip that ball how we just did then. About, talk about the uh, prize money these guys uh, make in a year, Heath. I know it's certainly changed in the back of like when I was playing. Yeah, well, I mean, back in back in your heyday, Bono, I guess most of the time you'd be just playing because like, you'd have to pay to play. And um, since then, it's become a li little bit more recognised, and we're getting a little bit more sponsorships through the door, and um, prize money's gone up a little bit. Um, the Grand Slams are where you make your big prize money for the wheelchairs. It's not, it's nothing compared to the able-bodied circuit. But I mean, um, I think so. Olsen won Wimbledon and he won um, forty thousand quid. So that, that's not a bad paycheck for the week. Um, the Australian Open prize money is pretty good. But just on a day-to-day -day tournament like a, a Super Series or an ITF one, um, so the main main draw guys looking at making probably close to three thousand dollars dollars a tournament if they win it and um, obviously second and third pays a little bit less and less but um, if you're up the top and you're winning tournaments and consistently playing well you can you can make some make some money these days so set point yep there you go there's the set and first set to Gustavo that uh, ended up being pretty easy in the end at 6-1 so hopefully Olsen can uh, reset and come back and Give a bit more of a fight in the uh, second set. I was a bit surprised with that. I thought after the first uh, three or four games, I thought uh, it was a pretty good even contest. And uh, as we said at the start, I thought both guys were going to be out here for quite a long time. So things need to change uh, pretty quickly um, yeah, to get a good contest going. But I don't think uh, yeah, they played all that bad, but it just uh, snuck away rather quickly at the end. I've got to take off, guys. Um, it was great being able to talk to you guys. I hope you um, enjoyed this first set of tennis. And uh, I'm going to try and get my, my coach to come over and uh, take my spot, uh, Francois Volgesberger, and he'll be able to explain uh, all the stuff that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, yeah, thank you. And tune in later on. I am not before 7 o'clock tonight, and I'm playing world number one David, David Wagner in the semifinal of the quad draw here. So thank you very much, Bono, and thank you, Crumpy, for allowing me to grab a mic and have a bit of a chat to you guys and um, 
wish you well for the rest of the day. Thanks, Heath. Uh, good luck with uh, today. Uh, make sure you get lots of water into you. And uh, good luck for next week. Hopefully you take yeah, yeah. the Aussie Open out. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Enjoy. You know you've got a good training partner there. Then if I you do, take mate. Out, hey? you, you make me get better every day, Bono. Exactly. All right, see Enjoy, you guys. mate. Thank you. So uh, Stefan needs to uh, hold serve here, get off to a good start and uh, set the tone. Otherwise, uh, going out a break too early uh, won't do him many, many favours. So needs to hold serve here. Uh, just had uh, his coach come and join us, Francois. So he's uh, just going to have a bit of a chat on uh, what you're doing with Heath and Dylan on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, also what you're looking towards the, the, the coming year as well. So the Australian Open's obviously next week. So what's the planning you're doing for that? Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, training the, the two boys, Heath and, uh, and Dylan, has been a little bit challenging and uh, basically we've spend a lot of time working on the mental aspect of the game um, stay solid and stay calm in every situation try to take the maximum out of uh, what's happening on the day and uh, and after increase the power forehand backhand uh, yeah generate more pace um, yeah it's, uh, that's pretty much the plan for the last training block and now try to put that into practice Keith, um, the day before yesterday, I had a very good uh, single, uh, very tough mentally, and managed to stay strong and to win. A set, uh, it was 9-7 in a tiebreak of the third set. Um, and uh, yeah, and this afternoon is going to have a tough match against uh, the world number one, David Wagner. So that will be interesting as well. He's beaten David Wagner before. Yeah, he's beaten twice actually. Um, middle of last year uh, two times in a row uh, but um, still you know it's quite a quite a challenge for him um, it's been the last tournament they play against each other was in um, in England for the master series and uh, David Wagner had uh, played much much better so it's the revenge of that one we'll see what's going to happen but definitely at the moment you know Today, yesterday was the same. The win is very, very, very challenging. The player make the the mobility uh, much more difficult. Try to adjust to the to the ball. But maybe Anthony can talk more about that with uh, your past uh, player experience. Yeah, the wind is uh, always difficult, but it's. it's How do you think uh, Heath will go in the wind? Uh, all the guys will go. The, the ladies struggled this morning with the wind and the. The guys are still got the challenges, but the uh, the boys are, are still playing some pretty good tennis. But the, the girls really struggle with their serves, so a lot of double faults and uh, first serve misses. Yeah, yeah adapting the the ball toss uh, with the wind definitely uh, definitely a big challenge. And also, I think you know after staying focused more on on managing the wind tactically rather than maybe changing your game to the opponent you, you have in front of you, I think uh, is the way to start a ten tennis match under those conditions. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, like when the wing wind is on your back playing more straight and when you're facing the wind, try to find more angles. But um, that's my point of view. That was a good hold by Stefan. He was uh, down on that, on that game and he held, his, he held his own, especially hitting against the wind. So hopefully Gustavo can uh, counter it. Yeah, I think that's his first hold from that end too, so mm. uh, it's a goodie. 
just uh, join in, but how was um, Stefan back and slice under those conditions? Because often when you've got the wind on your back, it's not always easy to um, to control. He does well, and then uh, you know it's just so, look, it's so hard because the, the, it's gusting so much. I think hitting over the ball um, with the topspin backhand is more definitely more advantage uh, on a day like today. Uh, but then again, he's getting some of those angles, but it's just making the making the shot. Yeah, and Gustavo is quite good at that, huh? Like uh, taking the ball early and yeah, he's the best. Never give up, just generating pace. You know, for instance, a shot like that, you know, we... Once again, you see angle, angle on the, with his backhand. The w facing the wind. It's a good shot. Uh, it's yep. good tennis, good tennis, good chair skills to get from the forehand. So, uh, typical days work for these guys, Francois. What are they actually? What are they actually doing? Doing uh, just before a match. Before a match, and then training and all that sort of stuff. How many hours? And yeah, I, uh, I think both those both players are a little bit different. You know, I think uh, I think Stefan will play today before the match, maybe like 20 minutes, half an hour max with his coach. Then uh, I think Gustavo will be way more intense. Maybe have like a, a deeper physical physical warm up and uh, hit with greater intensity. You know, a little bit like to a certain extent like uh, Nadal. You know, a little bit the same attitude, same mindset. Uh, also, the coach pretty pretty intense, so it's very intense on court. And uh, and after you know, in their own training environment it's a little bit um, hard to say exactly what's happening but for sure Gustavo uh, spent a lot of time on his fitness and rightly so you know with his uh, movement pattern a lot of uh, stop and go uh, it's very demanding on the, on the upper body on the shoulders so it needs to be very strong to maintain that um, mobility pattern for a long time so that was probably the yeah. longest rally of the match then, and uh, you just said uh, both take, take it out of them, on the, take the toll out of them. That was a good hold from Gustavo. It's uh, exactly what Stefan did in his previous game up that end, and uh, Gustavo has just done exactly the same. So one one. Previous uh, service game from that end for uh, sorry Stefan, he had break points as well and missed out. So if he is a couple of points here or there, it could be a, a totally different scoreline. And uh, so he's hanging in there, which is good. So uh, a couple more games, he will be telling on who's got the upper hand. We keep going on about this wind, but it's amazing how it can go from, you know, 80, 90 kilometre an hour winds, and it's just right then, that point, it was probably about 10 k's an hour, if that.
Wow. Wow, that was a great backhand. Unbelievable, eh? Yeehaw. Really wasn't that bad of a serve, was it? Yeah. You'd be pretty happy hitting that. And he goes, yeah, thank you. It was a great serve right into his spot, I would say. As well, what's your uh, calendar, touring calendar, look like this year? Uh, pretty busy. We have um, four. After two you players. finish the uh, Australian oh. tour, where do you go? Yeah, we go to Sri Lanka with uh, like middle range players around the top 80. Go to Sri Lanka, three tournaments, very competitive. And after that, with Heath and Dylan, we go to the U.S. for a Super Series and an ITF one. And then Japan and World Team Cup. And it's kind of a never-ending. But um, no, good, good schedule. A little bit difficult in Europe, um, coming from Australia. But um, no, I think it's going to be a it's going to be a great year. Once again, um, Gustavo consistency and shape. So is that three love? Uh, it's two one. Two one. Oh, he's broke his serve. This is what he did in the, in pretty much in the first set as well. He just he just stays tough on the tough points, and you know, he's against the wind, that was a tough one to hold to, to break it, break him, and he's done it. So. On the uh, Tour of France, well, are most of the tournaments on clay courts or hard court or a mixture of indoors, outdoors? Uh, mainly hard court. Mainly hard court. We've got uh, clay for the, the French Open, Roland Garros. But apart from that, very, very rare on, on clay, more hard courts. Yeah. A few indoor courts, like uh, there's a tour in, in February in the UK with Bath. A um, co couple of tournaments indoor. Uh, at the end of the year as well in Europe, September, October, a few indoors, but mainly full of uh, the summer with outdoor court, outdoor tournament. So. So Is Anthony, uh, you're coaching uh, Stefan at this stage. He's a set and a breakdown. What are you going to tell him? Uh, it's pretty tough, especially against Gustavo. He's making a lot of shots. But I would say, you know, maybe just make him play a few more balls. Um, I know it's hard to get that depth. But just to play a few more balls and not, not go so, so much for the lines. You know, so make it a battle of the, you know, battle of fitness as well. You know, but when he's that's doing that to shot. you, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. no. <laughs> Typical return, uh, with wheelchair, like trying to jam at the chair, right in the middle, not to give too much angle, to be able to stop the point, neutralizing your opponent. So well done for Stefan. Keep that ball low and straight at the chair. And again, yeah, yeah. sliding back. done two points like that so do you think maybe just keep hitting it straight at him and just take his mobility out of it there you go too oh he took the break he's holding
still struggle to hold serve from this end. What's he going to do this time? Hold. I will say so. Come on, a little bit of. for Stavis. A bit costly at that time of the game. You don't seem miss hit many though, do you? It's a good first serve. He needed that one. Yeah, he definitely did. Wow. That was huge. Uh, the, I would, would like to know what the uh, winning speed of that backhand was. Nice break from that, wasn't it? Again, game point. Misses out, so uh, another good break. Stefan needs to uh, hang with him here. He's still playing good tennis. He's not out of it, but needs uh, a couple of good games here. Stay with him.
Bad luck. It was a good pick-up, though. Yeah, I don't think uh, Stefan's playing all that badly. It's just uh, Gustavo's playing a, a bit better. He's making a good return, good length, and uh, just too good off the next shot. That's what I'm saying, going for a little bit too much on some of those shots. Just make him play in days like today. Yeah, sort of this level, making him play, you, you've got to press the envelope a bit. To just making him play, you, you need to do a bit more than that. And, uh, Turn. So, uh, Francois, who do you think is the uh, the best technical player in the men's game at the moment? Tough question, without notice. Yeah, yeah very tough question now. Um, still a player who has been impressing me for the past two, three months is uh, Alfie Hewitt from uh, Great Britain. 90-year-old, uh, 20-year-old, um, and... Uh, very talented, but also and mostly work really hard. Um, I like his um, his attitude on court. You know, he's fighting on everything, and uh, he wants to impose his game game style. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a great pleasure to to see him play every time he's playing. He's a yeah, big big miss, huh? Big miss from Stefan. You know, he did all those hard work to get those points to. And get the break point, and then he just threw it away with that. It was, uh, oh, not a good one. Yeah, yeah. That, uh. So is it Alfie taking the game to a new level, or you will do? I uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. He's on his way. He's on his way. Like Shigo, you know, has been doing for for a long time. I think Alfie definitely push all those guys uh, to the next level and again, yeah. It's the uh, third game in a row from that end. He's had uh, break yeah. points and uh, just can't quite get one. Nope. Yeah. Let's see. Another chance. Where would you go now, after missing two down the middle? Definitely. And as he did, oh, oh yeah. got he's him, got, got it. Got him. Nice, nice break. That was a good game to get. Hopefully it gives him a bit more confidence now. Three all.
And we don't see a lot of players uh, going to the net, maybe take some uh, you know, opportunities with this win. Anthony, tell us uh, how challenging it is to come to the net on a wheelchair. Uh, it's very challenging because they, you know, we don't have that lateral movement, um, and also we don't have the height. So it's quite easy for a player just to pass you or lob you. But I think if you hit the perfect, the right shot, uh, coming into the into the net is uh, you know, not a problem at all. A lot of these guys have got really good touch. And often, uh, would you agree to say that when the conditions are a little bit better, so less wind, there's much more drive volley. Drive volley seems to be more common. Definitely. Ooh, it's in. Wow. No, not that, I know. Yeah, it's, um, I would like to see probably one of the guys coming in and, you know, especially with the winds coming in and hitting a few more volleys. I think it's definitely doable. But I think they're just having, having enough problems trying to fight the wind. True. Don't give too many points like that. Important point, this one. He's missed a few of those backhands in the uh, last yeah, two games, hasn't he? He's played some, uh, some really good tennis to get in a good position, then he puts in a a double or a non-return or a cheapie like that, but he's a few he's dumped in the net, not only in the net, but probably halfway up the net, which is uh, not his usual form. And also, you know, not to give excuses to the, to the players, but um, most of them, they train in Europe, where it's at the, at the moment minus 10, probably in Sweden. So they train indoor, and they've been training indoor for a good four months. Uh, and last week for the first tournament, outdoor, with that amount of wind, um, it's quite tricky to adapt. And maybe, I mean, Gustavo in Argentina maybe was, has more training facilities outdoor. So that's also quite a challenge, I think, for all the, all the Europeans coming to the Australian summer. Yeah, good point. We're not allowed to use that excuse when we go to their summer, though. No, their summer, it's indoor sometimes. Huge second serve. It could uh, well be the match's second serve. Uh, There's that backhand. It's a bit wobbly at the moment, isn't it? He needs some training wheels on it. Put himself on the pump of the second serve again, and uh, you know, it's, uh, he's going to have to fight hard at, on, on the other end now because Gustavo's got the wind. It's uh, more favourable up this end. And Greg, you, you're in charge of the of the juniors in uh, in Australia, in, in Victoria, and um, seeing all those guys like being technically very very correct, like serves, forehand, backhands. It's more and more difficult to reach now that the top 10 is more and more competitive. How crucial it is for a junior to have a very sound technical uh, as early as possible. Yeah, look, uh, once you learn it from the early days, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to uh, continue with it later on in life. It's much, much harder to change a, a bad habit. So to keep reinforcing a good habit, is, uh, it's dead easy. And um, 
you, you've got to have good technique. You've got to hang on the racket with the correct grip so you can get the, the correct angle and spin and so forth. So we've got a really good uh, group of juniors at the moment. Uh, they've improved so much the last 12 months. Uh, some of them have improved their rankings. But that's, that's not the main thing. They're, they're growing as tennis players. But more importantly, they're growing as people there. So they're, they're really good, fun kids to be around and uh, just loving the game of tennis. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. They'll be playing on here this afternoon um, when the cool change comes through. But uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting to have uh, that many uh, young juniors to work with. Look, I can say a little bit about that because, uh, look, I started tennis later in my teens and uh, so I've had to learn all the basics of tennis and then also learn the you know, the wheelchair component as well. So these guys, you know, Stefan Olsen, he was back in the days when I was uh, on the tour as well. And, um, you know, he was, you know, a young kid at the time. And there you go. Um, I've just got some... Stefan Olsen started when he was seven years old. Um, and like when, I, when I saw him, he was... I think he was in his early, early teens. And I would have been in my late 20s at the time. And, you know, he was starting to take the world by storm then he was like the next generation of players to come up um a lot of a lot of people you know they have their injuries and then you know they'll get into get into the sport whereas the these guys have uh they're born with this disability and so they started at a really early age because now they can like the, the all those programs that greg was talking about are really good now um so you know, your likes of gustavo and you know stefan they're the next generation that's come up and they've taken it well to the next level. And saying that, do you think it would be possible in the future for like a good tennis player who's been injured to still be competitive like Stefan Ude, who was a good French tennis player, got injured and with his tennis background, uh, manage even late at, uh, you know, in his now 40s to, um, to be very competitive at the highest level? Yeah, well, that's look, that's proven in his results, and you know he w he was coming through when, he, you know, I, as I was starting to retire, and even then he, he couldn't play, like he couldn't move the wheelchair, but he could hit the ball like you know he was a professional. So and um, back in the back before he was injured, um, and so as soon as he learned how to move the chair, like his game just went to the next level. So definitely, like if a Roger Federer was to injure himself and come out to, you know, wheelchair tennis, I think he would just he would absolutely just smash people off the court. Uh, five three, Gustavo is uh, looking like he might take this. It's going to be a hard fight down at the uh, windy end. Big second serve. Gustavo will take a little bit of risk on that return. Good body serve. If Stefan holds this one, he's uh, he's got a good chance to take the set, like the next, you know, the second set. But yeah, a few extra points in the the first set there. Uh, another three points here or there. Uh, he's right in this match, but he's uh, missed out on a few rip breaks and uh, hit some double faults there as well. So That's a strong um, first serve by Stefan just then. Amazing what a first serve will do when you get it in, eh? Yeah, yeah I thought he, uh, that was right in the honey hole. That one. I thought yeah. he was going to make it quite comfortably and uh, went to sleep on it. So, uh. Yeah, he didn't have his uh, usual intensity on that shot, for sure. A 
good second serve. So what he can do with it. Oh, just, just, just. Can't think that way. Ah. However, there's such a thing as a, a good miss. He's uh, hasn't dumped it in an area. He hasn't hit it wide. He's uh, kept swinging the same way he has the entire match. So, yeah, good miss. Yeah, I think you would have liked Hawkeye on that one. Uh, I think it was a bit long, a bit heavy. I think he was more hopeful. Well, Stefan, just uh, keeping the pressure in. Now against the wind. Yeah, that's been the uh, tough end all day, so uh, let's uh, see what he's got here. First point, very crucial here. on the back end yeah back end slice above the head with the wind on the back it's not the easiest shot but the safest serve at the body eh? yeah, yeah. And you're number one come out to serve for it two first serves yeah two non returns uh like that So if you're good enough to do that, too good. Yeah, yeah good tennis, good tennis. Yeah. A bit tentative on that serve, eh, Ben, just then? Uh, sort of first serve at uh, 35th. Yeah, it didn't bounce as high as the first one in... Like Stefan, way more agile when the ball is low on his backhand. And that wind has also picked up another 20 kilometers an hour. So uh, that's, that's what that'll do to it. <laughs> Crossly. He, may have sh he probably should have waited just a little bit then. Yeah, and just uh, waited for that gust to go really by. really picked up the wind then and should have waited. Break point again. Turn at any time. Comments on that, Crumpy? Yeah, no, at uh, 30 love, he'd all his first serves and uh, he'd a couple more after that. So, uh, yeah, hats off to Stefan, made every return, competed well. So, uh, great effort. Again, that end is tough to hold, but at uh, 30 love, I thought he was uh, looking pretty good. Affording that at this time of the match, can you? Good 
dig by Stefan Olsen then. That yeah, was some yeah. pretty hard hitting by, by Gustavo. Best shot of wheelchair yeah, tennis. Yeah. Uh, that's the best shot of any tennis, I should uh, say. It was bound to happen today, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> Make the effort on the pushing to uh, hit that ball after one bounce to take time away. It's well done. Being quite patient huh, on that point. Maybe a little bit more patient than a few games ago. Big return, big return. Once, the ball, once again, huh, the ball rise above uh, Stefan's head on the back inside and uh, trouble for Stefan, maybe. Oh, what's happening? Was Gustavo uh, yeah, I was on the uh, about previous something? point when he hit the uh, winner down the line. He said the, the, the serve was long, but uh, okay. I don't know, you won the point. <laughs> yeah. Get up the other end and serve it out. Is the uh, the one a bit of local knowledge with the balls uh, bounced over the net and uh, then bounced over the other side without uh, Stefan being able to get a racket onto it? So uh, conditions today. I thought we might have seen a few more of those or a few more drop shots played as well, but uh, happens in tennis time to time. But yeah, hats off to uh, Gustavo for it. Timely in the match as well. Yeah. He's a bit lucky on that one. It was a good time to do it, wasn't it? Second time serving for the, for the match. Great second serve, body serve to get him started off. Just a little bit out. Massive serve. That was up there in the kilometres there. Massive, massive. Mm. A 
Brings up double match point. Yes, indeed. Amazing what you know, big, two big serves do. Then, didn't he? Hey? <laughs> that wasn't his best second serve. His head was down, everything was down, and just drag it straight on down. But, uh, Stefan's still up and about, still competing, which is great. Oh. Got him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well Game set Stover. match, Gustavo Fernandez. Yep. Uh, Gustavo through the uh, the final of the uh, Melbourne Open, so uh, the other semi-finals warming up on the other court. So uh, hopefully we'll see uh, Gustavo out there tomorrow and playing the winner of Alfie Hewitt and Stefan Hude. Uh, just letting you know that uh, we're going to be back on at six o'clock tonight. Uh, it's going to be uh, the local boy Heath Davidson playing in his uh, quad singles. Uh, so stick around for that one, and we'll see you then. Thank you.